Hi, I'm Jessica Herber. I'm from Long Island, New York, and I went to Woodstock 1994. So when Woodstock 1994 was announced, my uh, I was living in Franklin Square, Long Island, um, at my family home, and my sister, who's nine years older than me, she found out about the concert, and uh, as a cool sister, kind of told me about it, and she uh, told me all the bands that were going to be there, and I got really, really excited, and I was only 15. So I was 15 years old, and the bands that were playing were some amazing, you know, uh, acts that I really wanted to see, so like Metallica, and Nine Inch Nails, even Crosby, Stills, um, and Nash were going to be there, and Joe Cocker, which my father loved. Um, I just wanted to, to go, so I had to convince my mother to let me go with my sister, who was, at the time, I was 15, so she was like 24. So um, me and my friend Rabia um, went with my sister Vicky and Nona, her friend Nona, to Woodstock 1994, and uh, and the four of us had a really fun time, and uh, and it was it was exciting to be a 15 year old, you know, being able to attend such a large event with so many um, amazing acts, and um, it was quite the experience from the the beginning of like when we got there to. Uh, you know, our, our parking field was in uh, Rhinebeck, New York, and everything, and so it was across the river, and trying to even get to the festival was a challenge in and of itself. Uh, it took us from Friday to Saturday morning to get to the festival at the um, parking lot on the Rhinebeck side that we were assigned as part of our tickets, um, but the crowds were so big and there weren't enough buses to get all of the people from Rhinebeck over to Saugerties to go to the festival. So we had waited hours and hours in line to get on those buses and we had to eventually like give up on trying to get there Friday night because uh, we didn't have food, we didn't have anything, and I actually almost passed out at one point. <laughs> and um, we just decided to go back to our cars, sleep overnight on Friday, and then we wound up getting a bus early on Saturday morning over to Saugerties. And, um, and by that time, the walls had gone, come down, and, uh, and, yeah, and everybody was kind of going in for free, which was a... Uh, we finally got to the festival on Saturday morning. We found a place for our tents. And we were so excited to be there, and it was like we just wanted to get directly to the stages, starting to see the bands. And unfortunately, we had forgotten to put the cover on our tent, which um, at the time wasn't a big deal because it was not raining. But for the rest of the Saturday, um, you know, that did end up being a very major issue by the end of the night. <laughs> um, okay, so... So yeah, I, I went with my sister and it was before the time of like, you know, obviously cell phones and we um, needed to make like um, very explicit plans on where to meet at certain times to make sure, you know, as a 15 year old, <laughs> two 15 year olds kind of like navigating an entire festival that we would meet with my sister at regular points to make sure like everybody was good and safe. Um, so we had made a plan to like meet at a specific tower in the middle of, you know, the main field at a certain time. Um, it was around the time I remember Melissa Etheridge was on. Um, so we met her there. And then also at the end of the night, we were told that we had to be back at the tent at a certain time or she would like call the military on us. <laughs> like she would, you know, we had... We had flexibility, but my sister was a little scary sometimes, and uh, and we made sure to get back at the tent at the time that my sister told us to, or uh, you know, um, we definitely uh, were going to risk her wrath. Um, but uh, but of course, she wasn't at the tent when we got back there, which was happened to be like right during the Arrowsmith Act, at, like very late in the morning. <laughs> um, but she was not there, so she was definitely hanging out with a lot of other people, and uh, eventually made herself. Um, made her way back to the tent um, later in the evening. Okay, so so like one of the biggest experiences at Woodstock 1994 for me was when uh, me and my friend Rabia got into the area and stuff of like the mud people and, um, and we saw everybody was getting so muddy. We didn't necessarily want to get muddy, but we wanted to see like what was going on. So we were like on the outskirts of the entire crowd and, uh, and then at some point in everything, a few, uh, few guys kind of came up to us and were like, do you want to go in the mud? And before I even had an opportunity to answer anything, all, all of them just picked me and my friend up and dragged us into the mud. And uh, yeah, we definitely got um, 
got really muddy and right after that what happened is that MTV must have caught that on film and everything because they asked me to come over and then John Sencio from uh, from MTV interviewed me and just like kind of asked it or anything like did did you want to get thrown in the mud and um, and I was like no they didn't I didn't or anything they asked me if I did and then they just threw me in the mud and um, it's funny because with um, MTV ended up having the footage of me getting thrown in the mud so uh, so the interview is kind of like the interview happens and then there's the footage of me getting thrown in the mud um, on MTV and it repeats like all the time and uh, and it was like part of like the year in rock for 1994 as well. And uh, yeah, that just wound up being like something that all of my friends, when I got back and everything, were able to, um, to able to see us on MTV and everything played multiple times throughout that entire weekend. Um, was footage of us getting thrown in the mud, which was a, uh, which is still like kind of an experience for me. So yeah, it, me and Rabia really kind of prioritized. Um, the music and everything and being, you know, close to the music and the stage and I, you know, I was a big fan of Nine Inch Nails and um, we wound up being like, even with the massive amount of crowds and stuff, we made our way to like the front. We were up against that wall and uh, and that was, that was rough to be there for like a number of hours and um, there were just like funny experiences that kind of happened in that front of the front of the crowd. Um, including and everything and I don't know if uh, this will be <laughs> something that's appropriate but um, there was at one point and stuff somebody tapped my friend on the shoulder and was just like I you know it's been hours since we've been up in the front of the stage and I have to like I have to relieve myself and uh, and then my friend uh, you know is very dramatic and everything she wound up like starting to scream and like push people away and it wound up creating like a complete area and um and I think like a lot of people were actually a lot of uh, gentlemen <laughs> were, were were pretty um, excited that that happened because I think a lot of people wanted to relieve themselves and uh, and couldn't because again it's probably like these you know all of us were up there and stuff for probably like seven hours straight and uh and obviously and stuff a lot of people needed to to use the bathroom but yeah that was a funny story but I don't know <laughs> like um, it wound up being on like the the radio actually. Um, uh, somebody had mentioned and stuff like some girl freaked out and everything in the front of the stage and uh, and I heard it on the radio when, when we got back it was pretty uh, funny because that was my friend who uh, created like the whole crowd to, to kind of separate. <laughs> so when we went home from Woodstock 1994 like we, um, we were definitely had you know a lot of people had seen us on MTV and, you know, thought it was like really cool. Being a 15 year old and being able to have an experience and go to a festival like that was, uh, was great. Um, you know, and, and it really did impact us and everything for a really long time. Um, we loved going to festivals and concerts. We continued to go to concerts. Um, you know, my friend Rabia and everything was like, you know, one of, uh, my, my closest friends and we were concert buddies for, for years um, and it definitely impacted my interest and stuff in music and um, you know I, that that October I turned 16 uh, I had like even a it was a original 1969 Woodstock themed uh, party but um, you know it was always kind of like in you know my uh, my kind of DNA growing up and uh, Kind of like a formative years and everything. It definitely set a uh, set an experience and stuff early on in my life and everything that kind of resonated throughout. Um, you know, I went into a career in college and music, um, continued and continue even now and are even going to concerts and really being uh, into the to the music and um, I went to many festivals and stuff after that, including like the Lollapalooza, you know, uh, Woodstock '99, which you know. Is uh, questionable and uh, and you know and I'm still into music today. Would you do anything differently? Don't forget to come back with the story. All right, all right. Would I do anything differently? And um, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, I would have put the cover on my tent early on when we got there on Saturday morning. Um, that because of the amount of rain that happened, it was torrential all day. I mean, you know, you could see with those mud people how, how much rain actually happened that day. And when we got back to the tent, at the time my sister specified <laughs> to meet her, we, 
um, came back to all of our clothes, all of our bedding, all of our, you know, sleeping bags and everything being absolutely soaked and drenched and wet. And, uh, and we were exhausted after being, you know, being in the festival and standing and watching all the music all day. And, uh, and we just fell asleep in soaking wet blankets and, uh, with no clean clothes, covered in mud, um, and we fell asleep in that wet, wet um, blankets, and and really didn't have a choice. And uh, a few hours later, we woke up, kind of shivering and a little blue, and uh, and crawled over to my sister's tent uh, for some change of clothes and everything. But um, you know, that was wound up being like a very uncomfortable experience and stuff. At uh. Um, but we loved it. We loved it. We fell asleep and stuff like in that wet mess um, and didn't care because we had a hell of a day.